Listen, if you want to cheat on your spouse, absolutely you need to tell someone, maybe even them, 100%, not even a question. Wanting to cheat doesn't have to kill your marriage. Talking about a desire that you're having outside of the marriage doesn't necessarily kill the marriage if you deal with it. But acting on that desire and cheating on your spouse is exponentially worse, isn't it? Now, of course, wanting to cheat is still a massive red flag that signals that something is wrong in the relationship. Whether it's something that you're dealing with personally or something that's a problem in the relationship as a whole, wanting to cheat means that something needs to be addressed now. But most people refuse to see that as the threat that it is. But you simply cannot have a marriage filled with everything a marriage needs to survive and thrive if one or both of you wants to cheat on the other and that goes unaddressed. Hurting their feelings and telling them that you have a desire for someone else or that you find yourself being pulled to someone else, heck, even telling them that you are having thoughts of divorce probably ranks pretty high up on the conversations that you never want to have. But that's infinitely better than doing what I did. It's infinitely better than building up bitterness and resentment and creating false narratives in your head that they never really loved you in the first place. And they're never really going to love you the way that you want to be loved anyways. And there's no point in talking about that with them, is there? So just go get your needs met somewhere else because you deserve to be desired, don't you? And so I did. And I'm still with my wife, by the way, because in half of affairs, the couple ends up staying together. And do you know what would have been exponentially better than cheating on her and then staying married to her? Telling her, I want to cheat on you before actually cheating. And do you know why people don't say that? Because by the time it gets to that point where one person wants to cheat, the marriage has usually been lacking something for one or both partners for so long that they feel such a strong pull to the hope of getting whatever they're lacking in someone else, whether it be friendship or intimacy or a connection or being desired sexually. Whatever it may be, they feel so close to actually getting that thing that they've been deprived of that it's worth whatever the consequences are because they finally have a chance to feel something with someone again. And I'm sure there's men out there that haven't cheated, but they have an opportunity to. And when they hear me say to tell their wife, they say, well, that's not fair. You got to have that fling. You got to sleep with someone else. And now you're trying to keep me from doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to keep you from that. Do you honestly think I gained anything from that experience? Think real hard. Do you honestly think I'm better off having cheated on my wife and then staying with her? Do you honestly believe that that's a better option than if I would have told her the truth and worked through our issues before the affair? Are you so blind and selfish that you don't understand how terrible it is for a person to be sexually betrayed and then choose to stay married to that person? Are you so self-centered that you think it would still be worth it for her to go through all of that so that you could get off a few times with someone else? No, no, I didn't gain anything except pain and hurt and sadness for my wife. I gained countless moments seeing my wife cry and be broken all over again because of the choices I had made. No, I didn't gain anything. In fact, I lost. I lost the respect of my family and my children and my friends. I lost the benefit of the doubt. I lost certain freedoms going forward. I lost trust. I lost my marriage. I lost thousands of dollars in counseling, working way harder to get it back than if I was simply honest beforehand. Is that what you want? You want to see your dad cry when you tell him that you had an affair? Because my dad cried. Like most men, he's not a crier. And do you know why he cried? Because he understood how badly that hurts your spouse and your family. He understood just how justified Emily would have been if she said, I can't stay in this marriage any longer. So enjoy seeing your kids every other weekend. That's why he cried. Because he saw into my children's future and his heart broke that they might not have a dad around to tuck them in or do life with except for four days a month. And sure, you can still be a great parent splitting time, but that's not what you or your kids signed up for, was it? I can't stop you from cheating on your spouse, but you're a f***ing coward if you cheat on them knowing that you want to stay married to them. And I have hopes for any marriage to survive, but if the marriage is over, in your eyes, be a real man or woman and divorce them and sleep with whoever you want to. But an immature, self-centered coward lies about it and does it behind their back. So for those of you who aren't in that position yet, don't let your marriage get there. Realize that marriages only survive with honesty and transparency. 
Are you both pursuing those? Are you inviting and encouraging honesty and transparency about how the other person views the marriage? The good, the bad, the ugly? Because few marriages end due to an abundance of intimacy and trust and vulnerability and friendship and emotional connection. Millions of them die due to a lack of those things. Can you honestly say you're pursuing those in your marriage? Because most people don't even know what they are, much less how to apply them to their marriage. And that's why most people end up divorced or in a miserable, superficial, shallow marriage. Because ignorance and apathy kill more marriages than anything else. And I had to realize the hard way that you don't know what you don't know. But what you don't know still hurts your spouse and it can destroy your marriage. So go first and ask and answer some tough questions. Do I really know my spouse? Do I encourage and invite their feelings into my space? Do I pursue vulnerability and closeness and honesty with them and from them? Or do I discourage those or avoid those because I don't find importance in them? Well, I'm here to tell you, like it or not, they're important. So start asking the questions. Do I know what makes my spouse feel loved and valued and appreciated? Am I doing those things consistently? Would they agree? Do I know what makes them feel alone or neglected or rejected? Am I avoiding those things? Would they agree? Here's a big one. Do we have a mutual understanding of what sexual fulfillment looks like for both of us? Because I understand how tough it can be. He always wants it. She never wants it. Men use sex as a way to feel close, whereas women need to feel close before they want sex. I get that, but your marriage won't survive if you keep sweeping those problems under the rug. Trust me, you keep sweeping problems under the rug in your marriage, the rug bunches and you trip over it real quick. So men, you want to save your marriage from divorce or affairs? Then protect it, prioritize it, strengthen it, grow it, because nobody neglected a garden to producing consistent fruit. Except blackberries. Those seem to grow without any real attention. They must be some type of weed or something. But your marriage isn't a blackberry, okay? Your marriage is like new sod. What's the first thing that you do when you put new sod down? You water it. And then what do you do tomorrow? You water it. And what do you make sure you do the following day? Yep, you water it. And then even a year later, after it has roots in the ground, oh yeah, you still water it if it doesn't rain enough. And what happens if it's deprived of what it needs to survive, like water? It dies just like your marriage. So find out what the water is in your marriage and feed it. You'll be amazed at how much it grows. Men, let me make every fight you ever have from now on easier. Communication is about understanding. When she comes to you upset about something, what she's really looking for is understanding. And what does understanding require of us? It requires curiosity. That means actually listening, being engaged, interested, asking questions to clarify her perspective instead of arguing with it or dismissing it. That means exploring what she's feeling instead of getting defensive or dismissive or tell her that she's overreacting. Do you see how those things might move you away from the goal of understanding? Whereas things like curiosity and taking an interest in her pain or sadness, even if you've caused it, validating her experience as legitimate and then trying to empathize with it, that moves you towards understanding. That's what she wants. So how do we do that? We ask questions instead of arguing or correcting or dismissing. We say, it wasn't my intention to hurt you, but I can understand how my actions have caused you to feel that way. And I'm sorry, I will be more careful in the future, but can you tell me more about what led you to feel that way? Do you know what asking those questions does? It shows them that we are involved and dedicated and interested and devoted to them. It communicates that they can rely on us to listen and comfort them and move in their direction when they're hurt, even if we unintentionally caused it. That's what a great spouse does. Do you want to be a great spouse? Because if you don't want to be great, I have good news for you. You won't. You'll never accidentally be great unless you're a Blackberry, which we've already established you're not. Get off the Blackberry analogy. And men, let me tell you a little secret about women. Value her more than sex and you'll get both. Get that backwards, you'll get neither. She needs to feel emotionally connected with you before she has a desire to be sexually vulnerable with you. Don't know what that means? That's part of the reason you're not getting it as much as you used to. You'd be amazed at how the conflicts lessen when she actually feels like you're listening to her, when she can tell that you're seeking to understand her perspective. You'd be amazed at how the complaints lessen over time when she feels safe to share any hurt, even if it was from you. Stop expecting her to desire you sexually when you're still contributing to her feeling abandoned or hurt or taken for granted in this marriage. It simply doesn't work that way. 
Stop expecting your marriage to run fine when you don't prioritize things like affection and friendship and appreciation and connection and consideration and emotional safety and healthy communication. Those aren't add-ons. They're pillars of what makes a marriage strong or weak. That would be like not putting gas in your car and expecting it to run just fine. It doesn't, does it? Just like your marriage won't. And every man seems to want more sex and less fighting. But they have no idea what habits and practices lead to that. Can you honestly say you're trying these things? And ladies, I'm not saying you need to please him whenever he's in the mood. But at the bare minimum, you need to know your man. What does he need to feel sexually fulfilled in this marriage? And if you can't come to some sort of compromise, then you both need to protect and value this marriage enough to talk with a professional about those issues so you can figure it out together. And speaking of talking about what you need, women, most of you can't even tell your men what you need to feel emotionally safe and connected without feeling selfish. That has to stop. If you don't feel emotionally connected to him, that's a problem. If you don't feel like you can rely on him, that's a problem. If you don't feel like there's actual intimacy or closeness or friendship or safety in this marriage, that's a problem. And it will only lead to distance between the two of you. And with enough distance, you will eventually not even care if this marriage ends. Let's not let things get that bad. The best marriages are one where both people seek to know and be fully known by each other. Men, if you can feel yourself being tempted in areas of cheating or pornography or online chatting, whatever it is, keeping that to yourself, thinking that you can handle it, that's not being known by your spouse. That's keeping secrets. Remember, you're both a team. It's going to take two of you for this marriage to thrive. Keeping secrets only breaks trust and closeness and friendship. It never leads to them. And it's the same for you, women. Don't allow yourself to give up on him. Don't allow yourself to give up on this marriage emotionally and sexually and not think that's going to harm it long term. You both need to learn how to protect this marriage because a lot of the time, we are the biggest threat. So figure out what hurts marriages like secrets and criticism and blame and rage and people pleasing and emotional avoidance and defensiveness and dismissing their feelings and eliminate those practices. And then find out what only leads to growth and health and depth in your marriage. Find out what actually leads to your goals of less fighting and more sex or more connection. Things like trust and intimacy and vulnerability and empathy and healthy conflict resolution. Things like appreciation and affection and friendship and self-awareness and emotional maturity. Are you pursuing those? Because I don't care what your intentions were to have a great marriage when you got married. If you aren't intentionally prioritizing these things, you're not headed towards a great marriage. You're headed away from one. So start by being honest with yourself and with your spouse. Imagine how many marriages would have been saved if both partners were actually honest about how they felt in their relationships. Imagine how many divorces or affairs would have been prevented if we all knew what we needed to feel appreciated and valued and desired and communicated those to our spouses. Imagine how many problems would have been prevented if we got professional help before major problems arose and we simply asked the counselor to help us see our blind spots that we might be missing. Can you imagine who would do something so stupid? The type of couple that understands just how important this marriage is. This isn't about having anxiety or fear that the relationship needs to be constantly stronger. Anxiety can be just as damaging as avoidance. This is simply about understanding what a healthy relationship looks like opposed to what an unhealthy relationship looks like. That's all. Of course it's difficult. Everything worthwhile requires dedication and effort and intentionality, doesn't it? And a great marriage is worthwhile. And you don't have to wait until the walls fall down in your marriage to make sure that they're strong and reinforced. And this is how we build a strong marriage together. Because storms are coming, and the only way to stay standing is together. Wow, that was really corny. I know. Man, anybody in the mood for blackberries? I could really go for some blackberries right now. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. But you're a flipping coward if you cheat on them knowing that you want to stay married to them.